YouTube, what is going on? My name is Sweat, if you guys are new, and welcome back to another Apex Legends video. In today's video, we finally freaking win a game in Diamond while solo queuing. It took all the way up until Diamond won. I mean, we won a few here and there, but they weren't really intense games. And what I'm going to do for you in this video, I know I've been cutting up the videos. I haven't really shown you a full game of rotations and such. So what I am going to do is pick it up at the first action. And I'm going to leave the whole game playing for you and I'm just going to pause it when necessary. So for most of the time, you guys are just going to be watching a full gameplay in Diamond with rotations. You're going to see everything that I'm doing. And if something needs to be explained, obviously I will hop in. But without further ado, guys, let's hop into it. Drop a like if you enjoy the video at the end. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you are new. Let's get it. So right off the bat, you guys can see that we are using a little bit different of a combo than we are normally using, okay? The R9 and a charge rifle. When is the last time you guys saw me use a charge rifle? Probably never. But this fueled this big game that we had. This charge rifle was going crazy. Charge rifle is a great weapon for pecking people from long distance. And the thing has no bullet drop. It's amazing. Definitely would recommend. I, de I really forgot how overpowered this weapon was. If you know how to use it, it is super, super good. You guys can see right now we're just kind of pecking with the charge rifle. I decided to take high ground with my lift for a couple seconds to see if we can get a knock on the roof. And that also prevents them from staying up on the roof. So that was a, uh, that is why I did that. Now we're just backing up a little bit. And Breeze is way too overextended over here. Way too overextended. Especially for Gibby too. He has really no way of getting out. We should have got this knock right here. We're getting some good damage. That'll hold the Bloodhound off for a little bit. I'm going to back up and take a battery while my other teammate is... He he does he does a really good play there, the Octane. I'm not going to lie. He throws that jump pad and gets the Gibby over to him, which is perfect. So overall, after that whole situation was over, you guys saw me throw my ultimate ability on the left side of the bubble. I thought that would suck the one guy out, but it did not, unfortunately. And because of that uh, ultimate ability that I threw, he was forced to run to the right. I don't even know if he knew the ultimate was there, but if he had ran to the left, it would have been a super easy kill. Nonetheless, my job in that situation was basically to defend the res. And even though I couldn't do that perfectly, I still got the trade. And then I ended up cleaning up the last guy, which was perfect. And we got the squad wipe. And like I said, guys, earlier, that Octane made a really good play with that jump pad, getting the Gibby over there, or else he would have been thirsted a long time ago. So, And also, right after that fight was over, just that quick shield swap, just to make sure that nobody else is coming up on us. Because if I hadn't shield swapped, I could have got one-shotted with a sentinel, like a sniper, anything like that. So that's why you want to shield swap instantly after a gunfight is over. Here. 
So right now I'm just crafting some sniper ammo because you guys can see that I am very, very low on sniper ammo. Even though I have some right next to me and I just apparently didn't see it on the ground right there. I really need to get my eyes checked. We need some new glasses up in here. But I'm going to ping all this light ammo for my teammate to take and I'm just going to wait here. I should have taken it. I don't know. How, how did I not see that sniper ammo down below, man? Oh my goodness. Now I'm just going to craft some more because apparently I thought there was none around. Even though there were some on the ground, like I said. And you guys always want to be crafting at least two batteries and at least two med kits when you leave a situation. I think I'm about to start crafting some batteries actually and take four. If you can get more than two, then be my guest. But... I'm actually going to head over and get this 301 because you guys know how much I love the 301. I guess I'm not going to... Uh... I guess I'm not going to craft two batteries, but like I said, you always want to have at least two batteries and at least two med kits when you leave uh, a crafting zone, if you can get the materials. That's going to come in clutch later on in the game. You guys notice that with our 2kp right here, we're kind of just chilling. I really didn't need to be fighting a million teams. You don't really need to be pushing 100 teams when you already have 2kp. So we're just hanging out, crafting for a little bit. Gibraltar hears the rift opening over there, so he pings it, and we head on our way. And this is where majority of the action is going to go down, right over in this little area. For the rest of the game, it's actually going to be very, very intense with the charge rifle beaming off and the 301 shots. So right here, just what I'm doing is basically checking that nobody is ratting next to us, which means like anybody's hiding around the areas that we are positioned in. And also, this spot is a great high ground for the next couple zones, and I know this, so I want my teammates to stay up here for the most part. They are getting a little bit greedy going down low. I think we do make our way back up top. Even if we jump down a little bit here, we do make our way back up top, so... perfect bubble by that gibby i don't even think he knew that we were like well the, the teammate shooting at him but i don't think he even knew we were here all right so they get those kills and now now we go to freaking town with this charge rifle once i get that knock with the charge rifle i instantly decide to move up on the right hand side try to get a position where i can full kill that guy unfortunately it was not possible because this gibby was overlooking and I actually peeked for way too long and almost go down right there. So there, there was a big mistake. That could have costed us. And I will say, these guys were, like, relentlessly peeking us. I think I did about 1,500 damage just off this team alone from them peeking the exact same angles. They did not have confidence in my charge rifle shot. And it's pretty hard to, like, miss a ton of hard or charge rifle shots. I'm not going to lie. I don't know really what they were thinking. They were kind of just wasting armor at this point. Like, every shot's hitting for 60-plus. That was a good Gibby ult by them, but unfortunately, they could not capitalize by hitting any bullets at all right there. Recharging my shields. 
and the good thing about this position that we were in there was more charge rifle ammo in one of these boxes so i just kept coming back getting more ammo farming these guys up and yeah it was working out perfectly and right here like i said earlier guys my teammates make the brilliant decision without me even saying anything to go back up top and we're gonna hold that area for the rest of the game and that's gonna be crucial for us because that is when the end or where the end zone is going to finish and i'm just peeking around here making sure that nobody else is running up on us so i just start running up the hill finally Because you guys can see the zone right here in the top left hand side of the screen. And we are basically holding, I think there's three, I think the whole lobby is in front of us, which is absolutely perfect, but we wanted to make sure, and that's when we, why we end up going back up to the top. Also that it's good position, but we also want to make sure that nobody's behind us coming down the hill. And if a team did go behind us, honestly, I think they would have, would have been there by now, so. Just always want to be paying attention to zone positioning or rotations stuff like that especially in these higher tier lobbies and you guys can see i only have 1600 damage now this is a 4500 damage game i think so still got 300 or 3000 damage to go so we were farming in these last couple zones i decided to ping up here finally to tell my team to actually go up here spam pinging just so they know exactly what's happening and hope i'm hoping in the back of my mind that they're not like my other teammates where they will just run off on their own and they don't they actually they actually follow me up here which is perfect exactly what we need So when we're in a position like this, guys, on high ground and we have the whole lobby in front of us, uh, you can see that I'm trying to hold the right side to make sure that that Gibby team we were shooting with the charge rifle for like four hours does not get over to that right side. That's not what we want. And I want to force them to rotate right in front of us so that we can all get easy shots on them. Gibby throws his airstrike. Not the best airstrike in the world. But it honestly could have knocked this octane. This guy was a moron peeking for that long. I don't even know. Wait, where did that Gibby strike go? Oh, it hit the top. That was the worst Gibby strike ever. Let me change my uh, opinion on that Gibby strike. That was the worst Gibby strike ever because there was a thing blocking the top. Never. I. This should be obvious if you're playing in diamond or even in silver. Do not throw your Gibby strike in a building or anywhere with cover on the top of you that's just it's pointless not gonna do any damage just a waste of the ultimate you can see i'm lifting up right now just making sure that no teams are behind us and once i realize that there isn't and we are in a very very good spot to hold here i'm not gonna move off this railing as long as i possibly can if we don't have to move, then I'm not moving. Look how good this charge rifle is. Like, come on, man. This charge rifle is busted. It's doing like 150 plus damage for two shots. That's insane. I'm trying to go up in the air, trying to get some more shots on these guys. You can see every shot is basically connecting for 48, 50, 70 if we hit the whole thing. Like, dude, 
It's crazy. The gun wouldn't be insane if there was bullet drop on it, but there's no bullet drop. And this is the spot. I want to pause this right here. This is going to be the spot where it, the, the game takes a turn, okay? We had everybody in front of us. This was honestly a very good play for these guys to go in the Trident because my whole team was not focused on the Trident. Uh, you can see, I'm not going to say that name, but um, <laughs> Yellow over here was back and not really focused on the Trident. And Gibby was turned around facing the other direction. So I'm really the only team shooting the Trident. And they're going to whiz past us. And I know instantly we need to get these guys out of the game because now they have better position than us. If I get some good shots off on them, they're all damaged. I know that. And I'm going to push to the back. I don't even know if my Gibby and my Octane even knew these guys were over here. But I'm pushing back. Trying to get a knock. Get a perfect, perfect knock on that Octane, which is amazing. And now we have a 3v2. My teammate gets a knock, which is great. And the Revenant gets sent back right in front of me. And we take him out, which is great. Now, right here, our Gibby should have been playing back with us. I know what he was doing. He was trying to hold the other squad off. But in this situation, I feel like it's better to have all three players grouped up into like a little little cluster than having someone totally separate like he was. Nonetheless, we're racking up the damage over here on this down guy. Getting the finish. And my teammate goes down from the side, which is horrendous. And instantly, I know I need to keep these guys off my teammate because I do want to get him up. I'm just taking a look around. I decided to go up in the air, and my Gibby goes for the res, which is perfect while I res or while I uh, cover him from the top. You can see we're still getting some decent damage off with this charge rifle. Now we're just finishing the down kills, making sure that these guys don't get up. And I know this guy's a self res over here, so we got to get him out of the game. All right, so now we are in a very good spot. Let me pause this for a couple seconds. If you look at the zone up here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will notice that we are holding the back of the zone, which means there are two squads left, right? Means they are going to have to fight for the front position or the middle position. There's no way that a team is going to, like, sneak in the middle of the both of us and, like, wipe us both. That's not going to happen. So most likely the other team is going to want to position themselves on the outside of this zone, and there's not too much cover over here. So we definitely have the advantage as long as our team stays together. And that almost cost us, actually. The team does not really stay all together, but we stay together enough. You guys are going to see that we have a great angle right here on this rock. Get some good damage off on that octane. We're just trying to hold these guys off. We do not want them to get into the zone. My Octane's over there shooting the team on the left. We're shooting the team in front of us, making them... I'm, we're trying to make them fight. But I think I think our teammates got a little too concentrated right here. You're going to notice our teammates are pushing up on the team on the left. And I don't think that we really needed to make that play. I think we needed to hold off the team on the right because they are way, way overextended on that side. I know it's always better to get people out of the game, but when you're getting third partied like this and crossfired, it, you're putting yourself in the middle, basically. Even though we're on the edge of zone. My teammates are trying to get angles over there. They are playing pretty safe, but they're also very overextended. And they get a knock, which is perfect. And nobody went down. That's what we want. Okay, and now there's two squads left. So I do not want to push up and put my life in danger. I'm playing my life right here. So right here, I noticed that guy is separate. I did not throw this Horizon Ultimate far enough. I wanted to suck the Octane out like right into the open here so I can get some easy shots on him. Unfortunately, I throw the Ultimate ability very short and it doesn't actually get him in there, which kind of sucked. So my next thinking, I know I'm pausing it. 
my next thinking is while this Gibby strike is going off, they will be on the right hand side and they should be hiding. So I want to get some shots off. I want to throw my lift and get up in the air, get some damage off on this last team while I can. We get some good shots off, but if you're going to notice the Gibby went down and my octane traded, which was perfect. So it's a 2v2 scenario. And all I can think to myself right here is do not over peak. Do not over peak and get killed by these other two people because that's going to put me in a terrible spot. And they re knock the Gibby, which sucks. So he goes for the res again. And right now, right now, I hear a rev totem popped. Okay. And what I'm thinking is either I can go this way. They know where I am, right? They know that they're getting shot from this angle. I can either run right up to here and then lift up and try to like beam them off the totem. Or what I chose to do was lift up and go over the edge here. So once I go over the edge, I can instantly take totem, hopefully knock one of them. And then the other one will be left alone. It's going to be a 1v1 after I wipe one of them. But I end up going over, failing the first time. Like I wanted to peek over a little bit. And so I head over the second time, grab the totem, send Gibby back, end up finishing off Gibby, which is perfect. And then I send the Revenant back and head to a location where I can fight him. So right here, I also had to be very, very cautious of getting sent back. You guys can see that I have half health. If I get sent back to the totem, I probably would have been on the verge of being in zone. And that's not what you want at all. Especially when you get sent back, you have no health. I probably would have died to zone and lost the game. So I'm playing this very safe. Make sure he doesn't get the res. I knock the guy again, the Gibby. Getting some good shots off on the Revenant. End up finishing the Revenant off. And then it's just the Revenant with the self-res, I believe. Or the Gibby, one of the two. And we win the freaking game. Honestly, this was probably the best game I've had in Diamond 1 yet. Most of the games are kind of like the other Diamond tiers. Like, we're coming in second, we're coming in third, coming in fourth. But we could not finish off games. As you guys saw in the last video, we actually ended up coming in second twice. So, this, was, this felt really good to get a win under our belts. Everybody performed well and... And we are now about 250 points off of Masters. And that is the end goal for this series. So when you guys see the next video of the Solos, the Masters series, then that's going to be the last video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, make sure to drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys are new. Of course, it's been Sweat. I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.